Hi, doggy. And that's that's how we're here with a doggy. Does the doggy your friend die? No. Yeah. Oh, let's get right here. Back bleach. See, English does good and all that stuff. Oh, uh, ah, yeah, a couple things. Firstly, found out who James is voiced by. Masks manager friend, and it's Christopher Swindle. Again, is yeah, I mean, you, of course. I mean, you were saying you could tell it's him when you heard him talk more this episode. A few lines. I Most honestly of it could is it. something. <laughs> yeah, I, I saw a couple people online wishing that um, it was Eric Kimmer voicing him because apparently Eric used to be um, an indie wrestler or something like that. So yeah, it would have been cool, nice little reference. But oh well, can you do? Gotta save five foot people! Uh, anyway. Also, yeah, apparently the Mask versus Lieutenant's fight was uh, in the manga. It just happened later on. The anime made it start earlier, so might be. I'll take the L on that. Because, yeah, it's like when I was getting you through these... You have like, no skills and you're a loser. <laughs> I know! Okay, I'm sorry. But it's all right. Let's get right to the actual episode, though. So, we open up with the Vol Standish being activated and the Shockwave's... Fuck it up all the Soul Reaper red shirts. Well, you know, explosion to powers and everything. As we see the Bambis uh, talking about how Bambietta is probably going to be mad that they left her alone. And Giselle says Bambietta is the last one who should be using her true form because she's really damn stupid. So the fight will be over very quickly. I mean, she Bambi, is. Bambi is not that stupid. Oh, she's my wife, man. I don't care. What? I said it. Uh, I, yeah, anyway. Cut to uh, Shinji saying, Hey, even though your form changed, everything is still in reverse, so I still got the... Yeah, Shinji jobs. Again. Like, immediately. And Bambiette even calls him an idiot, saying that it doesn't matter if everything's reversed. All she has to do is just blow up everything around her, and it wouldn't really matter. Yeah, Shinji's ability is so gimmicky that if he fights anyone with an AoE attack, or that uses inverted controls, it doesn't matter. But that's when Momo shows up, and the doggy, Kumamura. And Momo is useless as fuck in this fight for obvious reasons. As always. Yeah. Just like her existence. Uh, well, yeah. As Bambietta explains, anything her race she touches or comes into contact with becomes a bomb. Which, uh, the, yes, I, how would you describe her abilities? Didn't you say the just fireballs, basically, and that's it? Explosives? Yeah. Well, Nothing really to explain. Yeah, she more or less says it herself there. Anyway, she attacks and blowing up Mr. Bucket, wanting to see Doggy's face, but underneath, it turns out there is no Doggy, for Kumamura has become a human. Does that make you sad, Doggy? The doggy's gone. That's we no dog, that's a man. <laughs> that's a man, man. <laughs> Got to couple more of talking to the great dog elder. I keep thinking of the great dog demon from Inuyasha whenever I fucking see this dude. Anyway, about what's called the Jinka technique. Which, uh, the elder explains that the werewolf clan were sent into hiding for the things they had committed in their past. I want to see that, man. Like, could one of the novels elaborate on that? I don't know, I haven't read the novels. That sounds cool. What, fucking werewolves and shit? What? No, the novels, the, the novels are for shipping. Yeah. But yeah, he explained they can temporarily break, break the curse that's been placed on them um, by offering up their human hearts in exchange for power. So Kumamura will have to give his heart willingly to the Great Elder. And yeah. Kumamura states he will do it to pay back the debt that he owes Yamamoto, because Yamamoto saved him, and, you know, he must repay his debt now that Yamamoto's gone, by getting revenge! 
No, cut back to the present. As he tells Momo to take Shin safety. And I could confirm, yes, for real, Z's, that this this one is anime only. That that whole scene with Momo fucking off with Shinji. Uh, yeah. But now Kumamura goes Bon Kai. But it's a different Bon Kai this time. It's Don Guy Joey. What's so different about this one, Dai? It takes off its clothes. <gasps> I mean, armor. Good God, he's naked! <laughs> And it's you... CG, I guess. Yeah, but is it good looking CG? People seem to say it is. I don't know. You'd have to tell me. Yeah. I mean, it has to be better than that the the, the Dean Sin CG, right? Or whatever the hell that was. Oh get it, you love Dean Sin. I do, I really do. <laughs> Let's go to the person who goes on about Orient when I ask about animation. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, Bambi Ed is actually mad that there's no doggy. She's very disappointed. But yeah, Kumamura explains this form in his uh, new Bankai version has no armor. It's left only with spiritual pressure and power. His Bankai's life force is its armor, but because it has no armor, it has no life. So, her bombs will have no effect on it. As the fight goes on, she starts noticing that there's a hole in Kumamura's chest. That, uh, yeah. He reveals that he did give up his heart, and while he's in this human form, he's immortal. So, he can't die. This seems kind of broken, but I'm sure y'all could guess there's going to be a cost coming up. Uh, uh, what, what cost could there possibly be from ripping your heart out? It does join Kano's fatality yourself. I don't know. I guess we'll find out. Bambi had to call him insane for throwing his life away. He replies saying, He didn't throw it away. He made a wager. If Yamamoto gave his life, how could he not do the same? Which, Swindle does an awesome job here as Kumamura. Like, he fucking nails it here. Yeah. Kashos wouldn't be able to tell he even switched. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, he's Across able to- Across all three of his voices. <laughs> it's so, yeah, it's so great. Out of all three of them. Like, they really got lucky there. But yeah, he's, he's able to throw her bombs back at her faster than they can detonate, so... Uh, Bambi had a prize her hardest, but she gets fucked up here. And she ends up losing. As we see Kumamura limping along towards the Quincy Castle, begging his heart to hold on, saying that he has to put an end to this and take down Yuha. It's a really cool rendition of Soundscape to Arter plays. It's really sad. Thinking back to the Elder again, um, the Elder more or less claims how it's ironic that Kumamura is throwing his life away, doing the exact same, same thing he chastised Tosin for. So, his life is yeah, a human. Yeah, he kinda did. Yep. Well, that's what works with the theming. Kumamura even blames himself for it coming up here, saying, like, if only I'd use those words as a warning that I said to Tosin. Instead, I just fell into the exact same trap he did. But <laughs> yeah. Traps. D not that kind of trap, come on. Kumamura thinks to himself before he becomes a, be a beast, the price I must pay for selling my soul for revenge, for carrying the name of the court guards, and for selling my soul for revenge. That is literally the dialogue, by the way, and the first time I heard it, even before rewatching the episode, I thought that sounded a little redundant. And not for taking the words I spoke to Tosin as a warning. Then he says, I was so, before getting cut off. He can no longer think or speak at all. He's now just doggy. Dogs. There's no man, there's only dog. <laughs> but, uh, Tetsuzaimon shows up to carry the doggy, saying, Let's go and avenge Master Yamamoto together. And you do get a shot in the manga version where you see Kumamura his face that he actually looks very depressed and sad like he can still understand Tetsuzaimon is what it's implied in that version but he can't interact with him anymore but that's the only difference there with that scene 
Either way, yeah, that's the end of Kumamura's character arc. And honestly, back before we did our rewatch of Bleach, I thought Kumamura was a very okay character. I didn't really give much thought to him. I'm actually really glad we did a rewatch, because he's become a character I like a hell of a lot now. And I feel his ending is perfect. So people are... Of Bambi Edda, we get to say hi, dog gaffers. <laughs> yeah, that too. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally their entire interaction with uh, between those two. <laughs> but yeah. Some people are really hoping Kumamura can get his human form back. You poor naive fools. I miss Kumamura already too, guys. Okay, you got you got a dog now. Yeah, he can be your pet. Anyway, after that. We see Uryu is sent to retrieve BG9 and Songdu for they're both uh, still really fucked up, and including BG9 being like, my recovery shit is only at like 40%. Uh, Terminator EXE stopped working. <laughs> yeah. So. Oh well. This now we see the for taking a rocket to your chest. Yeah, and Songdu took Hyorimaru, or Daigyor and Hyorimaru full face first, too. <clears throat> but yeah, cut to the four Bambies approaching Bambietta. She begs Giselle not to do something before cutting away. So, whatever it is, uh, probably not good, especially since Bambietta was half dead, anyways. Now, back to Hashwon and Shunsui. And. Shunsui's all like, it looks like the tide has turned in our favor. And Hashwa's like, well, that's who, well, why I'm here. Because I'm going to turn the tide back. See, the barrier's gone. This whole time, I was stealing Reishi from it. Ah, but Nanao puts up a different barrier this time. Hashwa realizes that it's a trap. But before he can act on it, he gets called away. Saying that he has orders to leave now. So... <laughs> Shunsui says, I can't wait to meet him again, though, because he wants to offer him tea next time. I actually really like the banter between these two. Because you can tell they respect one another, even though they're on different sides. That and Robbie Damon and Steve did a really good job, too. It would sure be a shame if they, don't, if they don't end up fighting each other. I'd be all for that. I don't know. We'll see. I, I honestly did it, you know, we'll find out. But yeah. Now back to the lieutenant, says, uh, you know, Ikaku and friends, commenting on how Kumamura's spiritual pressure disappeared. And we see James begging Mask to get up. And that's when Mask gets up, shouting round two is when he really gets warmed up. And Ikaku says, wait, but you said this was only a one round match. Ikaku, I thought you'd be happy that you'd get to fight him again. You love this type of shit, even if you're losing. Who are, are you, man? man? What have you done? Did cock? <laughs> but yeah. James rings the bell for round two as Mask goes full ape shit and... Uh, die. Does he do any cool wrestling moves here? Oh... Uh, I, I, I think he... he, he, just, he I think he does a power bomber body slam. <laughs> Well, yeah. no pile driver. Sadly. Disappointing. There's always next time, though. He does a three count as all they're pinned completely and wins the match. He laments not having a crowd to sell merch to, though, saying he'd make a killing on this. For he's taken down all the captains that have taken him on now. These were lieutenants, Mask. You're confused. But, yeah. He sees a light in the distance as he wants to head toward it, but Shuhei attacks again. Before Mask can finish him, though, after Shuhei obviously gets knocked back down, Kensei and Rojiro show up to challenge him. With Rojiro saying, hey, beating a tab tag team like us, you'd make a real name for yourself. So, what their tag, what would their stable name be, Dai? Um, the Job Squad. <laughs> Damn it! <laughs> well, Mask seems down. He's like, oh, I want to take you. Ah! He's like, I want to take you guys on. Let's do this. As the episode ends. <laughs> but we have a post credit scene with more stuff with Ichigo. 
as Ichigo is struggling under the weight of stuff. And there's more images flashing to him. We'll get to those in a second. And he has <laughs> eyes. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. Ichibe more or less states, uh, the weight that you feel is everything that you wish to protect. And the memories you're seeing are the eternal memories, which is the power of the Soul King. And the memories of the Soul King. So we, we see that now we can actually get more clear pictures of shit. So it was the Soul King standing in water the whole time with what seems to be Son Pakto. And he's... A soul King is what? <gasps> and he's in a whirlpool next and with other whirlpools around him. And it's him losing his limbs and abrupt explosion thing. And then it's... Now, he, uh, people lose their limbs all the time in this. It's no big deal. They really do. Yeah, see, there you go. There's your hand severing. You got it. Oh, the Soul King. As quick flashes of the Quincy's uh, attacking the Serete from the thousand years ago, and you see, like, a quick image of the 13 Court Guard squads, the original ones. And then you see the crystallized Soul King. Before we see Ichigo's eyes, and I mean they're normal at first, but then there's the spiritual pressure thing with him. And this actually was a shot from the trailer. You notice all the multiple colors I take it die with that shit. Yeah. Yeah. The popular theory is each one represents a different aspect of his spiritual pressure. You know, blue for the Quincy shit, red for the Hollow, green for the Fulbring, etc. No one gives a fuck about Fulbrings. Eh. Yeah, Rubrica's hot, just saying. Yeah, yeah. You wanna set her on fire? Well, either way, during the spiritual pressure flowing into him thing, Ichigo screams on top of his lungs. Uh, my heart's out to Johnny on Bosch for this, because it sounded like that would probably fuck his voice up really bad. If he weren't used to it. At this point, yeah. He deserves a hug for that. And the eyes are back! But that's when he raises his Zonpok toe. And it's, we see a light as it cuts to Ichibe smiling. But now Ichigo arrives at Senjumaru's palace. It seems like he got out of that realm asking, All right, so what do you want me to do next? And that's it. So we might be done with the Soul Kings theorizing and stuff. And I really do wonder what the hell they're setting up for, because yeah, I still have no fucking idea. I guess they're we'll setting find up for something eventually. Oh yeah, it's clear. It's clearly going to be eventually. Probably, well, I imagine it's after going to be Thousand Year Blood War is over. But yeah. So, episode 17. What do you think, Dai? Um... It, ne it needed more pile drivers. Oh. Uh, Instead, all we got was some body slams and a lariat. And a dog. That's not a dog. I mean, it is a dog now. Yeah, so this is probably my favorite episode so far in this particular core. Especially <laughs> since Kumamura uh, quickly became a character I liked a hell of a lot, and the way they handled it was really well. And Chris Swindle and Dan Yaku did really fucking good, too. And, yeah. Also, props again to JYB for that scream he had to do. Even if he's been doing it for years, that still can't be easy to do like that. Just call him dead weight. See how it goes. Yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna have to murder some more JYBs later in, in Armored Core. You son of a bitch! And hey, don't be for being all those AC pilots. Don't be sad for Chris Swindle. He might have lost being able to voice Kumamura, but he got James! With that really weird as fuck high-pitched voice he's doing. Which... <laughs> why? <laughs> and the... yeah, the preview is Rojo narrating it, so y'all know what we're getting. We're getting a mask-themed episode next, and I can't wait! I want to see more wrestling shit, man. I'm all for that. More visors jumping. You don't know that. We'll see what happens. I have hope for them, man. <laughs> I'm in their corner. Mostly because I have to be. Peori and Mashiro are visors, and I waifu them. I'm obligated to now. <laughs> but yeah. 
Let us know what y'all thought if you agree. Again, it's my favorite episode so far. We'll we'll see where it goes though, because we still have a bunch of episodes left. I think nine episodes. So it was also revealed episode twenty six is gonna be an hour long. Can't wait. The hype is so, real, man. So ten episodes? Yeah. It's gonna be fucking awesome, man. Fucking great. But we'll be back next time with more bleach. Wish you have anything else that die before we get out of here. Uh Yes. That is all. <laughs> that makes sense to me. And on that note, we're going to get out of here. And because I don't know how many other people are going to mention uh, Yamamoto and Kumamura kept bringing him up, I can say it for one last time, I guess, for now. I changed my room. Thanks again, guys.